Okay, uh, I'm very glad to see you. Uh, let's start uh, today. Uh, Alexey Bezalev will talk about uh, Rabinius manifolds and some efficient procedures to uh, to get integrable hierarchies from these structures. Uh, Alyosha, please. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction and also for the invitation. So <clears throat> let me start by saying that indeed, so it's about the Frobenius manifolds, but after uh, Boris de Bruyne passed away, who was the first well person to drive all the theory and to sparkle almost everything that is done up to now in the theory, so it becomes uh, well essential to call this de Bruyne Frobenius manifolds, even so, well, he never used this term. So uh, uh, let me first start that by saying that in principle, the idea in order to construct an uh, integrable hierarchy uh, associated to one De Bruyne Frobenius manifold uh, is very old. So I, I will explain what the De Bruyne Frobenius manifold is uh, and what the structure is a little bit later on. Well, uh, I just give some <coughs> historical remarks. So in principle, the idea to investigate uh, the integrable hierarchies via the De Bruyne Frobenius manifolds is really old. It uh, goes back to uh, Boris De Bruyne himself. And there are even several constructions. Uh, the most important out of them are the so called uh, DZ hierarchies, that is by De Bruyne Jank, and DR hierarchies, that is uh, double ramification uh, hierarchy introduced by uh, Sasha Buryak. So these are, in general, different constructions uh, that both associate, indeed, an integrable hierarchy to a uh, De Bruyne-Frobenius manifold. Uh, in order to explain what that means to be integrable in both cases uh, is uh, a different thing. Uh, in particular, for example, for De bruyne zank <clears throat> that means uh, that uh, you have two uh, commuting Poisson brackets. So, and indeed, these are different hierarchies, and one of the problem with them is that uh, it's, in, in general, rather hard to compute them. So, uh, well, you know that they exist, but in order to compute them and to um, compare with something well-known or to say that uh, it's some new hierarchy, it's usually a big problem. And, uh, for example, uh, the, the simplest De Bruyne Frobenius manifolds known are the so called De Bruyne Frobenius of A and D type. And uh, in particular, for this uh, De Bruyne Frobenius manifolds, well, it is known that AN manifold gives a DZ a hierarchy that is equivalent to N minus 1 reduction of KP hierarchy. So, in particular, A2 uh, uh, gives a um, uh, gives a, K, a KDV hierarchy. So, and uh, even the equivalence of DR and DZ uh, is only known, well, uh, for fully only for uh, several few uh, ends. So, for DN hierarchy, in order to uh, understand what the DZ uh, hierarchy is in the case, uh, it, it was only only down, I think, five or seven years ago. So, <clears throat> and uh, what uh, I'm going to present, I'm going to consider not just uh, one particular De Bruyne Frobenius manifold, but I'm going to consider the series, the series of De Bruyne Frobenius manifolds. Uh, in my talk, I will start with the series of A type or series of D type Frobenius manifolds. And uh, what I'm going to do is to construct uh, out of them a system of uh, PDEs, of commuting PDEs. And uh, my big goal, so, and the idea of this uh, research is that uh, we do not aim at uh, giving an integrable hierarchy to every associated the Bruyne Frobenius manifold. Uh, but the idea is to investigate somehow the good cases, uh, but uh, so that what you get is way easier than in the DR and DZ case. Uh, so from the very beginning, the approach uh, I'm going to introduce uh, shouldn't work for 
for everything. And in particular, you require indeed, so in order to start, uh, you need a, a system, uh, infinite system of the and Frobenius manifolds, and they should also be, well, in some sense, consistent. Uh, I will explain it later. And But uh, what, what is important is that uh, in our case, the um, integrability properties or, well, for, for example, the commutativity of the flows will follow very, from the very, very easy uh, conditions that are essential for every De Borum Frobenius manifold. So the theorem that was the first theorem in this, uh, uh, well, in this project uh, was that if you take the A-type De Borum Frobenius manifold series, then what you get <clears throat> is a dispersionless KP hierarchy. Namely, uh, comparing to the uh, work that was done before us, uh, uh, recall that for A type De Bruyne Frobenius manifold, uh, one A n De Bruyne Frobenius manifold was given a n minus one reduction of KP hierarchy, and we uh, build up a KP hierarchy, and we indeed construct this hierarchy. So we construct and then identify it with the KP dispersionless KP hierarchy. Uh, assuming uh, the infinite series of these De Bruyne Frobenius manifolds. And similarly, in the D case, uh, we construct <clears throat> some uh, system of commuting PDEs and then identify it with the uh, one component reduction of a uh, two component BKP hierarchy. So, okay, how it goes? Well, first of all, um, let's see what are the Brown Frobenius manifolds of A and D type. So I'm not going to explain what is the Brown Frobenius manifold. Well, in general, I'm not going to tell the story of that. We don't need that. So in my talk, I will only uh, speak about the De Bruyne Frobenius manifolds of A and D type. So in this case, uh, uh, the manifold is uh, the best possible. So this is CN, N is the same N as the uh, rank of the, well, uh, root system. And uh, assume it with the coordinates, with the coordinates V, and then one can build up the so-called unfolding of a A or D type singularity. This is the following function uh, that uh, has N plus two variables. Uh, these variables have different meaning. In particular, the variables V give a deformation of a polynomial in X and Y. So <clears throat> if you forget all the Vs or, or namely set them to zero, then you get the polynomials uh, in two variables uh, of A and D type and they indeed define a singularity of A and D type. Um, then uh, if you assume any V in this, uh, well, CN, in the space of the deformations, uh, then for every fixed V, you can consider the following quotient. Uh, this quotient, uh, well, you, you quotient out the polynomial ring uh, by the ideal generated by two directives, by two elements. Uh, well, you might notice then that actually uh, the unfolding of A type uh, only depends on y in one semant. We have the, the semant uh, y squared. And obviously, mm, quotient out uh, the polynomial ring in the variables x and y uh, by the ideal that contains uh, y is sort of the same as to forget about uh, any dependence on y. So this, this is okay. And the idea is basically that, uh, well, we want to write this all in a unified way. So Alish, could you comment, uh, is it the same as the Frobenius manifold of invariant function uh, functions uh, with respect to the very group section? Yes, yeah, that's that's true. It is the same. So you can uh, consider the complexified uh, while group of the corresponding root system and you can consider uh, the uh, it's uh, it's a quotient. The orbit space, right? The orbit space. <laughs> it will be the same. The Brown Frobenius manifold. The invariant polynomials are VK or something like this. 
So the invariant polynomials will be different in two cases. Uh, in, in the first one, this will be uh, the mm, symmetric polynomials. And uh, in the second, uh, a little bit more complicated, well, with, with, the, with the squares. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, actually, it will be another construction of the same De Bruyne Frobenius manifold, but actually, the isomorphism between them will be really, really, well, something, well, something rather reasonable, actually, the period map. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, and the point is that this quotient trick, it is indeed a quotient trick. So, namely, uh, it will be a finite dimensional vector space uh, because uh, these uh, lambdas are uh, deformations or unfoldings of an isolated singularity. Uh, but uh, important thing is that uh, it also has a, a social product, yeah, as every quotient ring has. And the product uh, is uh, very simple. So uh, I write it down for a n and d n. So it says that the class of x n uh, can be expressed by the classes of uh, x to the power zero to x to the power n minus two. And the class of y is equal to zero. So this is really easy product. So, and this will exactly be the product of our Frobenius manifold. Well, sorry, may I ask a question? Yeah. Um, how does AV depend on V? I don't see in the formula. On the right hand side, there is no V, but there is V in the left. Yeah, there is V in the left. Uh, well, uh, there is, uh, the point is that in this L lambda W, you have V inside. Oh, you mean so, in the coefficients? Yeah, in yeah. Coefficients? Oh, I see. Yeah, in oh, the thanks. coefficients. For example, uh, indeed, in order to understand uh, why uh, what I write uh, is true in order to understand this x to the power n plus uh, this sum is equal to zero. Uh, you need to do a simple thing. You need to consider this lambda a n, take the derivative with respect to x. So, and uh, then this will be a zero in this quotient ring. Uh, but this zero in quotient ring depends on v. Okay. Yeah, that's clear now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th thank you. <clears throat> and uh, you can, for example, also notice that for the uh, lambda d, uh, the role of y is rather special. Uh, for, for a, well, the class of y is equal to zero from the very beginning, and somehow, well, it doesn't really contribute to the game anymore. So, <clears throat> but uh, in the case of uh, d, mm, d type, so uh, uh, y, uh, has rather well special property. So multiply it by the class of X, uh, it gives uh, again the class of Y multiplied by something dependent on the parameters. Do you assume that this parameter is non zero, Vn? Not necessarily. They can be zero and that's, that's okay. So in particular, yeah, in particular, uh, if uh, V, all the Vs, uh, equal to zero, then what you get uh, will be exactly the Jacobian algebra or Milner algebra or local algebra of a respective singularity, A or D singularity. And that's actually the idea. That's the idea of a De Bruyne Frobenius manifold. <clears throat> the idea is that you have a space. In our case, the space is uh, C to the power N, but I denoted by MW in order to stress that th this is the space in which we will live. And in the different points of this space, we have essential product in the, uh, in the tangent space. Uh, so we will uh, later identify this, tan this tangent space with AV. So, <clears throat> and this product indeed depends non-trivially uh, on, uh, on this point. So, so in, a, in a sense, this space MW is a base, and at, at every point of this base, you have a kind of your know, ring growing, right? Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. But uh, not just a ring, so that uh, mm, uh, finite dimensional ring, yeah? So, <clears throat> so indeed, an algebra, finite dimensional algebra. And this product uh, is indeed really different. 
For example, you might see that uh, if uh, in A or D, in both cases, if you set all the variables V to be equal to zero, uh, then what you get uh, will be a local algebra. So that will be an algebra with only maximal idea. And if you get away, if you uh, deform, if you get away of the point, all these are equal to zero, then you get semi-simple algebra. These are, well, indeed different algebras. So, okay. <clears throat> so uh, let's assume, okay. sorry. May I ask something? Yeah, sure. Uh, in the last line, uh, the second polynomial uh, two two x y plus v n y. How do you get it? Uh, is it the partial derivative of something? Because I do not. Uh, if you differentiate lambda d n with respect to y, you get something different, right? You do not get the term v n y in the partial derivative. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. So, yeah, that, that's that's right. Yeah, I think that's a misprint. So there should be no Y over there. No in in the last line. Yeah. So the the, so oh. the, the the error is in the last line, not in the not in lambda dm. No, it's not in the lambda. It's not in the lambda. Yeah, it's on the last line. So. Yeah, it's on the last line. Yeah, thanks a lot. So uh, you, in, instead of this VN class of Y, you should have VN1 class of 1. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, mm, well, yeah, thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, so um, what we do now with that? Now the idea is to uh, consider the basis of this AV. In both cases, we, we fix basis once and for all. For all the different values of V, <coughs> we fix the same basis as the classes of uh, the X of uh, X and Y. So this will be these classes. So you are not forced to take this considerable ba <coughs> this particular basis. And um, for example, instead of the class of Y, one could con have considered the class of X, Y. So it's that's a matter of choice. Well, uh, but uh, then you uh, associate uh, now the structure constants, the structure constants C, A, B, S, that depend on a point, that depend on V, that will be the structure constants of the algebra A, V, which is written in this basis. And then you define the product in the tangent space in the tangent space to the uh, to our m to what will will get a uh, brown frobenius structure you define the product uh, well as written the, this product circ exactly with the same uh, structure constants okay so so in other words one could say that uh, we build up a Kadair Spencer uh, isomorphism from the tangent space to M to AV that associates to a vector field on M a derivative of lambda uh, with respect to along this vector field. So th this will be an isomorphism, and then one can uh, pull the product from AV to T TM. So <clears throat> uh, Namely, this is the same as to say that uh, d by dVA is multiplied by d by dVB in the same way as x to the power a minus 1 is multiplied by x to the power b minus 1 in uh, this quotient ring. Okay? So, ah, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, indeed. So, in particular, uh, in particular, uh, if we have said that d by dVA is almost the same as uh, x to the power a minus one, uh, and d by dVB uh, corresponds to the class of x to the power b minus one, then unless they do not get to this relation, x to the power n is equal to something uh, on the right hand side, then the product of them in this quotient ring is just uh the uh class of x 
to the power that is sum of these two classes. And uh, we only need to apply this relation x to the power n equal to something when this power exponent uh, is raised higher than n minus one. So in particular, if it is not raised higher to the n minus one, then we get uh, x to the power a minus one plus b minus one that ex corresponds exactly to d by dv a plus b minus one. Okay. <clears throat> and now what, what is written on the on the next line? On the next line, we get exactly the same as written uh, in here. X, uh, the class of x to the power n uh, is equal to minus sum of k minus one vk multiplied by classes. Yeah, this is the same as written uh, on the second line on this slide. So, so this is about the product. In this way, we get the product. So this product will be uh, automatically uh, commutative and associative because it was commutative and associative in AV. So, <clears throat> but uh, now we uh, may also introduce another important uh, piece of ingredient for the brewing Frobenius manifold, that's a pairing. And well, in general, so, in order to introduce this, this pairing uh, is rather complicated procedure. It's not that easy, but in this particular case, I, I can do it uh, in the following. Well, not very really beautiful, but um, in a working way. So <clears throat> you say that the value of your bilinear form uh, on the pair of vectors is just, uh, well, this particular structure constant. But this is the same as to say, that you uh, take a product of uh, these vectors d by dv a and d by dv b, expand this product and take the coefficient of d by dv n in what you get. That will be a function, a function, function dependent on v. A priori, it's, uh, it's, it's non-constant function. So it's usually a non-constant function. Oh, sorry, may I ask a question again? Yeah, sure. Uh, I just wonder whether what happens if you change coordinates in MW. Is there any kind of covariance or contravariance in the coefficients that you define in this way? Uh, in the coefficients of uh, whom? Of... Well, I mean, in C, A, B, and the coefficients that define well, of the course, well, of course, product. Well, that's, coefficient. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, that's... I, I just a little bit perplexed why you actually chose a tangent bundle of MW, not cotangent bundle. And so can you explain this? Uh, well, <clears throat> uh, well, uh, let, let me first uh, answer the first question because it's easier. So this is indeed a tensor. So the way it changes when you change the coordinate is uh, exactly as it should be uh, for tensors. Uh, well, why tangent bundle <clears throat> and not cotangent bundle? Uh, well, uh, for example, because uh, we use here implicitly uh, in this formula, uh, we use the uh, isomorphism. Uh, as I said, the Kadaira Spencer isomorphism that uh, associates to a vector field on M the uh, derivative along this vector field of, uh, of lambda. In this game, in this way, you get an element of a v. So, so you mean there is an, uh, some kind of abstract and variant way to define the same structure yeah. without because here you just gave a coordinate. Well, actually, as I said, so uh, uh, I instead of, instead of introducing this uh, structure constants, one could say that uh, the map that I called the Spencer map uh, is an isomorphism of uh, C. CV modules or CV shifts and being an isomorphism, it allows you to pull back the product from AV to uh, M, to the tangent shift of M. So, Thanks. Well, <clears throat> well, uh, I'm very sorry. Well, I, I try to um, tell the story a little bit uh, simplified in order not to scare people. And yeah, in some cases it makes it actually worse. Okay, 
uh, the, the point about this pairing is that, uh, well, uh, I can't uh, explain it, but actually it is non-degenerate and uh, CV bilinear. So <clears throat> actually this, this will be the Poincaré residue, the same as Poincaré residue. And a big theorem of the Bruin and uh, Saita, Marihika Saita and Kyoji Saita is that uh, there are new coordinates. Actually, in this case, this coordinates T will depend polynomially on the coordinates V, uh, such that in the new coordinates, this pairing becomes uh, constant. So this coordinates will be called flat coordinates of this pairing. So actually, the pairing is flat. Is it invertible change of variables? Yes. Yeah. A polynomial <laughs> invertible. Yeah. 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 So, and uh, even quasi homogeneous. So, uh, and uh, the point about it uh, is that in this new coordinates, uh, the product, so the pairing uh, became better because the pairing uh, is now constant. So it's it's always better, uh, and uh, also these new coordinates uh, make the product potential. Namely, this is the property the property we didn't have before. Uh, it was easy to write down the product beforehand, but there was no function that would integrate this product. Namely, in this new coordinates in the coordinates t, there is a function f uh, that we will call. Uh, potential of the Brown Fabianus manifold, so that this product is very easy to write down. One big function uh, gathers all the information uh, of the product and also of the pairing. So, well, th this, these are two formulas. Well, that explain <clears throat> how, how the pairing is, is there. So, um, I did not tell the story how to how to find find this uh, this variables. Uh, actually, it's it's uh, uh, I mean the change of the variables, how to expand uh, T Y V. It's actually not that easy, uh, but that was an invention of Kyoji Saito that the pairing is in fact flat, so that there are such coordinates. So and then the brain found found the way how to write the potential f. So the potential itself, so now it uh, fully describes the, scr the structure of those of this De Bruyne Frobenius manifold of A or D type. So it's now all gathered in one function. But so, if you have, I'm sorry, if you have uh, uh, just uh, the Frobenius algebra, suppose mm -hmm. you, I, I give you a pro pro yep. algebra. So I define the product and I define the form. Right? Uh, is it not uh, the the fact that this the, all this exists is potential? Right? It's uh, there are Frobenius algebra which not fit in this framework. No, every Frobenius every Frobenius algebra has a potential. Every Frobenius algebra has a Frobenius potential. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> well, in principle, uh, all I speak uh, here is about the uh, commutative algebras. Uh, well. Uh, if you want to consider non-commutative algebras, uh, Frobenius algebras that exist, it a little it is a little bit more complicated uh, what to understand by this potential. But that's uh, anyway possible. For example, the quaternions uh, will also give you a Frobenius algebra, uh, and it will it will have very very funny potential. Like, okay, sorry if I got it will be. Okay, sorry. Okay, I forgot. It will be really funny and easy. Uh, I, I thought that uh, uh, a Frobenius manifold is a family of Frobenius algebra. Indeed, so, indeed, indeed. So but the one algebra. Indeed, indeed. But the question was um, uh, the question was the following: uh, If uh, the structure of an the Brown Frobenius manifold is the same in every tangent space. So in every tangent space, this is just the same Frobenius algebra. So then if there exists a potential, yeah, it does. So 
So these are good Frobenius manifolds, right? <laughs> that, are, that are very simple. For, for those De Bruyne Frobenius manifolds, uh, the potential uh, uh, will be just cubic. If it is cubic, then uh, in this product formula, uh, the third derivatives do not depend on t. And that means that, uh, well, the product will be the same in all the tangent spaces. I'm very sorry. Is my point visible or not? Ah, okay. Thanks. Yes. So uh, these are here now the examples of uh, these potentials that are obtained uh, in A and D case. And uh, one can notice that, um, well, they don't really tell a lot. So in particular, they always depend uh, in a very special way on the variable T1. Uh, for example, uh, from, from this from this formula for the uh, third derivatives of a V that are not third derivatives in a point. So on the left-hand side, we have indeed a function, yeah? So, and the right-hand side doesn't depend on the function, uh, on, on the variables. So therefore dependence on T1 will always be very special. And in particular T1 in this way will always correspond to the unit uh, of an algebra, D by DT1 will be always a unit but uh well that's about t1 so we have t1 uh, coming to the only to the cubic terms of the potential but there are also another cubic terms and uh, there is even more terms and the potential grows and grows and becomes rather big so not that much can be said about the coefficients of this potential so in particular for example, these potentials too, they play a role in uh, mirror symmetry. And mirror symmetry, people always compare uh, these potentials with some gram witten potentials. And in gram witten potentials, every coefficient standing, say, one minus one fourth, standing in front of a monomial, it corresponds to some correlator, to some number. And people trust that these numbers count uh, curves. Uh, passing through some points in the manifold, well, and there is an essential question, well, what do these coefficients mean? So, so for example, 210y. <clears throat> that was actually a big question. And uh, well, we found uh, some solution, some answer to this question, uh, only working with uh, our project in here. Uh -huh. So yeah, uh, very important thing. If you raise the following question, uh, what, uh, mm, okay. Uh, so, okay, for A and D type, A and D type, uh, the Brown Frobenius manifolds, these uh, potentials F will be polynomial. But that's uh, not always the case. That's only for A, D, E, for the simple singularities. And in general, this could be some, uh, uh, even formal power series. So, uh, coefficients. Uh, we have found the following rather funny statement. Uh, actually, we found it uh, via the KP hierarchy. <clears throat> if you consider, if you consider the following numbers, uh, P hat, uh, IJ gamma, uh, that will be all partitions of the uh, numbers i and j, uh, positive numbers i and j, uh, so that they are not completely independent. So one is a partition of i, another is a partition of j, but then we also have his, these gammas. And these gammas says uh, that uh, i k plus j k should be every time gamma k plus one. So <clears throat> such a number of partition. So we have found uh, that the coefficient of a potential of a n and the potential of d n is actually the following number. Uh, unfortunately, this is not for mm, all the possible all the possible m plus two derivatives of potential. So this formula doesn't cover all the coefficients of the uh, F type potential of A type potential or D type potential. So, but 
And this is actually some enumerative meaning. So in particular, you see it says that when you have uh, m plus two um, t's in a monomial, then we have minus one to the power m minus one. So getting back, you see that cubic monomial comes with plus, cubic comes with plus, cubic monomials comes with plus. The fourth uh, order uh, monomials come with minus, fifth order with plus, and uh, that actually works for you know, all A, -T A type. So uh, another important observation that actually was crucial to what we were doing what uh, we were doing is that if you consider the uh, second order derivatives of different potentials so you you take a type potentials but with the uh, different number of variables so in particular if n2 is greater than n1 then in f a n2 you have n2 uh, variables in uh, in f a n1 you have n1 variables so the number of variables is different but if you have mm, uh, alpha and beta uh, so that it is reasonable to take the second order derivative on the right hand side and also on the left hand side then there is the following funny equality of polynomials so this is now quality of polynomials so it actually says that uh, as your n2 grows, for example, take here some uh, alpha and beta that are smaller than uh, n1 plus 1, then if you take some n2 really big, then uh, on the right hand side in this uh, second order derivative, you don't have, you don't get any new information. All the information of this second order derivative was already there for a n minus uh, n one for the smaller one. So uh, let me illustrate this in the example. So these are the same formulas uh, for the potential uh, we had uh, on the previous slides. So this is f a four and f a five, and uh, for them, I should take alpha and beta, so that the sum uh, is smaller than. Uh, four plus uh, sm uh, less less recall than uh, four plus one. So I can take uh, the greatest to be two plus three. That is five. Uh, take the derivative with respect to t two and t three. So uh, I get in, in here uh, t one, t two and t three. Uh, in here I get t three t four. Oh, and nothing more. So uh, the same also for a5. For a5, t2, t3 gives me t2 from here. And also t4, t5 uh, in here. So these are different expressions in t. But I have here this substitution that is different. That is different for, uh, well, it depends on n, yeah? Uh, here, this is. Uh, n1 plus 1 minus gamma, and here n2 plus 1 minus gamma. So after I take this substitution, <coughs> I indeed receive the same polynomials. So we say that these potentials stabilize. <coughs> so this is a very important point for uh, our construction, and uh, it was actually uh, unexpected so no one no one knew it and it allows to do the following so uh, as i say it in here after you have fixed alpha and beta uh, then you can compute this second order derivative in the smallest uh, applicable uh, n1 plus 1 take n1 to be equal to alpha plus beta minus 1. Then all the information that is in f a n1 will be also in all the greater n's. So then there is a following idea. Uh, the idea is to take all these possible pairs alpha and beta 
and extract all the information of this data that stabilizes. Namely, uh, I take this second order derivative by with respect to T alpha and T beta. And then look, uh, I have here this uh, T with a shift. This is exactly the same shift that is applied in here. So this is this, exactly the same shift that should be applied in order to get the data that stabilizes for these potentials. Uh, well, uh, by our stabilization result, it follows that if you consider these numbers, then they do not depend now on n. So you indeed extract. So I have here n, yeah, but uh, it uh, really doesn't depend on n uh, due to our stabilization statement. And then you construct a system of PDEs that will depend on this uh, coefficients, coefficients R. So this is on a function f that depends on infinite number of times from t1 to infinity. And the uh, uh, important point is that on the left-hand side, we have the derivative with respect to every alpha and beta. And on the right-hand side, we have a derivative with respect to t1 and gamma 1. So in some sense, t1 and gamma 1 f can be considered as some Mm, starting data, some Cauchy data. So, yeah, and this uh, system of PD is, well, it is consistent. Uh, and uh, coincides with the uh, dispersionless KP uh, written in a FAE form. It is exactly the same. <clears throat> but for us, it is important to say that we have uh, constructed this and uh, constructed it exactly from the uh, coefficients of the De Bruyne Frobenius manifold. So, sh should, I, should I say what is the KP in the FAE form? Or it's no, actually not for this seminar? Uh, it, should, it, it would be great. Uh, hmm. Well, uh, actually, I have learned it from Nathan Zon and Zabrodin. So uh, the idea is very simple, uh, that uh, actually, um, uh, instead of you know, writing KP uh, in the uh, Hirota form, you can write it on, on a tau function. You can write it on a logarithm of a tau function. And uh, in that case, uh, instead of the residues you have in uh, Hirota form, you have now this oper uh, operators uh, delta uh, that are that well that also depend on the additional variables that is z1 and z2. So you consider this dz that is a formal differential operator. Uh, z is a formal variable, and nabla z uh, is a h deformation of it. Namely, note that uh, nabla z uh, it's a formal power series in h, and uh, the first component of this expansion uh, that is h to the power zero is exactly dz. Then kp hierarchy in a fay form, well, it's a very easy thing. So uh, it's it's not due to Natanzon Zabrodin, well, but uh, it was uh, known previously. It's a, a very simple thing. It's uh, once again uh, uh, equality uh, on the function f that depends on the infinite number of times. And on the left-hand side, you apply twice this nablas, take the exponent, and compare it with the uh, with this ex expression on the right hand side. Uh, once again, it should be understood uh, understood as a uh, formal uh, equality um, in Z one and Z two. Uh, but what is important observation of uh, Natanzon and Zabrodin is that uh, after you have written uh, this KP hierarchy in such a form, then it's very easy to get a dispersionless limit, uh, first of all. And second, it's really easy to get uh, other way around, namely to recover full KP hierarchy from the dispersionless limit. Namely, if you introduce 
now uh, the differential operators dkh so uh, that the following uh, equality holds namely d d1 d1h is exactly uh, is exactly uh, oh, oh no sorry d, d well, yeah uh, dkh uh, is really dk so the differentiation with respect to dtk plus uh, something additional dependent on h then the result of Danton Dabrodin is that uh, the full KP hierarchy on a logarithm of a tau function uh, can be written uh, in the following form. So these are now these uh, numbers R that I had on the previous slide. So look, this is our theorem with uh, Dunin, Barkovsky, and Danton. It says that we get this hierarchy from the De Bruyne Frobenius manifolds. And, uh, well, the result of Natanzon Zabrodin says that the full KP hierarchy is uh, written in the same way, but you should substitute uh, the uh, differential operators DK with DKH. Uh, this says that, first of all, the hierarchy we have constructed is exactly the specialist KP hierarchy. And second thinking says, it says that if you now want to construct a full KP hierarchy out uh, of, of what we have done here, what we have got from a uh, Bruyne frobenius manifold, then you should just make this substitution, substitute D alpha by D alpha H. So, uh, well, okay. I have 10 minutes and not, uh, well. And D1 coincide with D1H, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, also, for example, if you expand uh, this equality, uh, you will uh, see some, well, quasi homogeneity. Indeed, D1 is equal to D1H, that's true, that's true. And D2, H is equal to D2 plus some coefficient HD1 or HD1 squared here. Yeah, I think so. Well, uh, I'm, uh, well, one should expand the, expand the exponent. Sure, uh, okay. Okay, this is, well, FA form. So, why is it good and why is it bad? Actually, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, um, well, one can play uh, the similar game uh, for D type, uh, D type, the Brown Fabianus manifold. But uh, as I said uh, from the very beginning, for this uh, D type, the Brown Fabianus manifold, uh, well, there is this special class, the class of Y, and uh, it uh, behaves a little bit differently compared to the classes of X. Uh, I mean, if you, well, um, well, if you recall this uh, pedagogical mistake, well, uh, well, you might see that actually this formula in here, uh, if you forget about uh, Y squared, uh, looks really similar to what is upstairs. Uh, it is not exactly the same as, as written upstairs, but it looks uh, to be rather rather similar. So, but uh, the dependence on Y is well really rather special. Uh, uh, therefore, also for D type, uh, there is stabilization like uh, for A type potentials but uh, this stabilization is a little bit is a little bit different and also it respects in a special way this uh, last variable and out of that uh, we get some uh, special flows so we, we distinguish the flows uh, that come from the uh, uh, additional variable one of the coefficients uh, are said to be the highest possible. And uh, from the uh, other variables. And uh, in, in this way, we get we get different flows. 
so uh, I, I'm not well. I'm not sure it is possible to read now anything. <sighs> but the point is that uh, in this case we can also well. First of all, important thing is that uh, there is. Uh, a stabilization condition for D-type De Bruyne Frobenius manifolds too. So it is in general possible to write down uh, these coefficients RD. And uh, the second thing is that uh, what we construct in this way is once again a system of commuting PDEs. So this system of commuting PDEs, well, we have identified with with a um, particular uh, known um, system of PDEs. That, that's okay. Uh, but um, yeah, here here are the first flows. But uh, important idea of ours is actually the following. The idea is that uh, if you have some infinite series of uh, De Bruyne Frobenius manifolds. And uh, if also you can extract these numbers R, taking the derivatives of the Brown Frobenius manifold, and uh, well, so that these numbers uh, look on the left hand side, I have only alpha, beta, gamma, but on the right hand side, I also have uh, this number n. And I ha have also this uh, gamma, gamma, uh, how do you, gamma dash overline. So gamma bar. And that was the case every time uh, we had with A and D. For example, for example, uh, for example, this uh, T, uh, T gamma hat is uh, S and two minus gamma. So the idea is that uh, if you can extract uh, these numbers, so that these numbers are well defined, and uh, that means that the system of potentials satisfies some stabilization condition. Then, if you write down this uh, system of PDEs with the help of these numbers, then the system of PDEs will be consistent. So this will be so this will be a commuting system of PDEs. And the funny thing is that uh, it will be an infinite system of PDEs in any case, but the uh, property that uh, it will be consistent that the PDEs will compute will exactly correspond to associativity of a product for the Brown Frobenius manifold. So nothing special, just associativity of a product. Because recall uh, for A and D, uh, the Brown Frobenius manifolds, uh, we have introduced the product from the very beginning so that it was associative. And after that, we claimed that there is a function f that uh, integrates this product. So then uh, the property of being associative for a product written in such a way, it's actually a huge uh, system, but finite, uh, of uh, partial derivatives. So, and uh, well, the solution of this system uh, of partial derivatives so called WDV equation uh, exists for every De Bruyne Fabianus manifold. And the theorem of ours says that actually this is all you need uh, in order for such a system of PDEs to be uh, consistent. Well, to, to, some, to some extent, I think you can trust in this because, well, uh, look, mm, what you have on the left-hand side, yeah, uh, you have the uh, repeated derivative of f. Uh, now you should check that if you differentiate the left-hand side and right-hand side with respect to some new t gamma, then uh, the uh, order in which you apply the differentiation on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side is the same. And because we have constructed this as out of uh, the potential f, this will exactly correspond 
to uh, the property that to multiply uh, the vector field dA by the vector field dB and then by the vector field d gamma does not depend on the order. Such a funny thing. Okay, well, uh, it looks like I will need to stop soon, like in two minutes or three. Well, but that was actually an old stuff. Well, um, as you like. Uh, well, let, 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 let me just say that, well, that, that uh, along uh, this um, old Dubrovin Frobenius manifold theory, uh, there is a, some new approach that is connected to open Gram Witten series. Uh, and in Gina Zero, it corresponds to some new solutions to what is called open W equation. It's also associativity equation, but now on a pair of functions, the old one that was solution to W and one additional function that corresponds indeed to open Gram Witten invariance or something like that. So, well, we have found some solutions to these equations uh, together with uh, Sasha Buryak, also uh, with some uniqueness condition. And uh, well, the last thing I say is that these uh, new additional open potentials, they also satisfy the stabilization condition. So they also stabilize. And even in a simpler way, because if for the classical solutions to double DU equations, we had stabilization of the second order derivatives. Here, with the same change of the variables, you have stabilization of the first order derivatives. So in this way, you construct a new flow that corresponds to a new variable. Yeah, recall, well, yeah, well, I didn't say. Well, this FO, it also depends on one additional new variable. And also actually corresponds to the product in the direction of this additional variable. So it's in here. And uh, in that way, one also gets a system of commuting PDEs. And this system of commuting PDEs uh, actually corresponds to the dispersionless modified KP hierarchy. So, yeah. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, it was it was hard to <clears throat> to make such a dense talk uh, on this yeah. subject. I have two two uh, very general questions. Uh, so, is there some geometric interpretation of uh, of uh, of your hierarchies? Uh, so, at the first glance, it looks like uh, like uh, some combinatorical uh, uh, construction. So. Could be uh, could, could be interpreted uh, in geometric terms uh, for some Frobenius manifold. No, I don't know. No. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, so well from the point point of view of Frobenius manifolds, I can. Uh, justify in some way this stabilization property that can be justified from the point of view of the product that's true but the hierarchy itself well what is the geometric meaning of kp hierarchy well you should think about the gross money as well i don't know okay uh, the second just just observation uh, you have uh, you have uh, very important properties of an alternative science in generating functions. Uh, yeah. You have demonstrated. Is it related with some stability property? Stability, uh, you know, uh, for, for uh, stability about the uh, condition. Uh, it is a condition of imaginary on the, on the imaginary part of root of uh, of uh, polynomials, uh, or uh, with the algorithmic convexity property. Uh, they have no idea. Okay. Uh, well, uh, algorithm convexity of whom? 
Alors, si je peux le non, non. Mm, I was talking about it. I don't know. So uh, I will write down. Are there other questions? May I ask a simple question? Well, well, well you're very welcome. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned in your talk that uh, this construction can be moved to non commutative setting. And there is a non commutative KP hierarchy on free algebra, right? And the whole hierarchy, they con consistent everything. And I believe your non commutative construction should work. But what about D series? Is it possible to move to non commutative setting? Well, I have to admit, I don't even know it for A type. No, I mean, uh, the, the you know the KP equation, right? In the KP equation, yeah. you, you, you can put equation KP on free algebra. Hmm. So, so all elements, you know, in derivatives, whatever you, letters are just elements of free algebra. They, there is no way to to swap them, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is a lax representation, everything, hierarchies, and I believe your construction will also work because you, you, you said something about non-commutative Frobenius. Manifold. Did you? The beginning? Well, uh, yes and no. I mean, actually, well, uh, the theory of non commutative Frobenius manifolds uh, is not developed at all. Uh, if, if you want to have, well, some full theory. Not uh, full theory, just, just, just KP, your KP, your, your constructions that you did with KP. That maybe well, but, but KP associated with A, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. what with D? Is it anything possible to do, or there are some obstructions to do with the D series in non-commutative case? Well, you know, I don't, I, I, I can't even answer this question for A type. So, because, well, what, you, well, I, I write, I write here down because, uh, well, it's, it's sort of, it's rather interesting for me. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, I well so before going to D, I should first check A. Right. So unfortunately, and, uh, I can't answer. So you know, I I am not expert at all in this uh, Frobenius algebras, but uh, I I remember with uh, we did some study with uh, Bushtaber, and uh, we found mm. a very a new sort of Frobenius algebra associated with uh, with symmetric powers of C two. And mm -hmm. just uh, you know, studying this the the quotient rings, etc., and we found these algebras. Mm -hmm. So I I just wonder if we have, and they are finite dimensional because if you have finite uh, symmetric power, you have finite dimensional algebra. I I I wonder is it possible to you know to push this algebra to to the Frobenius manifold and to associate some integrable systems? You have in hands. A good Frobenius <clears throat> algebra with everything non-degenerate form and you know all structure constants known everything. Sasha, as I understood, the uh, the notion of the potential is uh, crucial uh, in the com commutative case. Yeah, that was the, the algebra is commutative. No, the, al the, al the algebra. I mean, uh, with Bushtaber is commutative. No, the, the, my first question, of course, the notion of potential probably should be uh, kind of uh, probably, I don't know actually, because what happens with with, uh, with potential is non-commutative case, I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, we do have, we do have uh, uh, the non-abelian KP on free algebra, right? You just take this lax, lax approach, you know, you just uh, take this in, the, in this lax operator, all letters non-commute with each other. And do the same job, and you will find the non-commutative uh, hierarchy of, of KP. Yes, yes. Uh, non-commutative hierarchy of KDV. So now we have a different picture for, for that, you know, kind of alternative view uh, using this manifold. Probably that's very, I, I would be very interested to, to see how it can be reflected uh, at this level. Well, that's indeed interesting. Well, me too. But you know, I'm not very well. I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect much uh, in here because. 
because first of all, indeed, you need this uh, stabili stabilization property, and that's not something that happens all the time. Well, and you need an indeed an uh, infant family. That's also something that doesn't happen all the time. Uh, but it does happen with uh, with uh, with a KP, you know. Yeah, that's true. It, uh, it's but, not commutative KP. It does happen. It's not commutative. Yeah, yeah. I see. I see. I see. I see. That's what I mean. Well, well. Yeah, the funny thing in here, you, you know, that uh, well, mm, it wouldn't be a good uh, a good result if one gets a well system of the brown Frobenius manifolds that suits some hierarchy. Well, I don't know. But, well, in principle, in principle, yeah, that's 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 interesting to check. That's interesting to check. Concerning concerning what you said about the symmetric algebras, actually, well, um, we are a little bit uh, lazy working in here, but uh, in in principle, oh no no no, I should say we have too much teaching. Uh, but the point is that mm, the idea is that actually, if you have one. System of the Brown Frobenius manifolds that uh, gives you uh, in, in well integrable hierarchy in some in this way. Then uh, the hope is that if you consider the tensor product of the Brown Frobenius manifolds, then you also get a, a hierarchy. Obviously, not a new one, but for example, uh, I, I hope in this way that you get uh, n component KP hierarchy if you take n n tensor power of a type of Brown Frobenius manifolds. Well, but one should think a little bit about the details. So maybe in this way you also can recover the, the this case of symmetric algebras. So no vector case, I think uh, in the modified KP probably you can do it in, in, in the KP vector KP. I just don't think the way do it because we, we know that there are vector modified KDV there are vector modified KDV well I, I know better KDV theory but uh, vector KDV itself is, is not a good thing you know oh sorry I, I don't know about the vector KDV anyway thank you oh. Thanks for attention. Okay, may I ask a short question? Lesh, thank you for your talk. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. uh, may, maybe you address it in your in the first part. Uh, but uh, what's about dispersion full hierarchies regarding this approach? Uh, well, yeah, the idea is the following: is that. Um, um, the Brown Frobenius manifold is anyway a gene zero data. And even yeah, if you so therefore you only get the dispersionless part. And then uh, this is um, um the, the idea is that after after that, in order to get a full hierarchy, you need to make a substitution. For example, I have here the next slide. So the next slide says uh, how to get the full MKP uh, out of dispersionless MKP. Well, it works in this way, uh, in this case. Uh, it works in A, it works in D, it works in open A and open D. But uh, I can't say further. So you can once again play the same trick and uh, introduce this uh, D uh, apparatus that now depend also on H. And well, at least in these cases, I know well it requires the full hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And what model correspond to it? Um, you don't know, right? Uh, what What do you assume by model? I, I mean, I mean, so sometimes we still have some geometry related to these expansion terms. If we, if we have, and we we do have this expansion in H bar. Ah, you wanna say? Ah, you wanna say that the? Mm, that's interesting, by the way. Ah, so uh, I understand you in the following way. 
that uh, we have constructed these coefficients r uh, out of the potential, and uh, these coefficients in the potential uh, corresponded to the product in the Brown Fabian's manifold. And now, uh, introducing the variables h, we can play the thing back and to consider the product given by this us, but now with h. Maybe, yes. and But again, my experience actually shows that sometimes the subleading term plays some uh, interesting role. It's, uh, it's usually related to some uh, logarithmic models mm -hmm. and uh, something like that. So it's, and it's also related to the uh, full tau function. Mm -hmm. That's right. So not the leading, but subleading, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So actually, it's also it can be some interesting things related to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's then, the then the, the other terms are purely perturbative. So well, I wouldn't say they are not interesting, but uh, well, at least we can uh, manage them in some regular way, almost uh, in all cases. Mm -hmm. But yeah. this subleading term it can uh, it can conceal some interesting information. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's that's very interesting. So I I will try to check something. Okay, but thank you anyway. So yeah, I, thanks for the I apologize that I was late. Well, I, I well I was I was surprised you came. Uh, I want it. I want it. Okay, so thank you. Thanks. Okay, okay. Uh, Alyosha, I'd, I'd like to thank you once again. Uh, it was a very interesting talk. And I hope we'll, we could continue this discussion in private communication. Yeah, thanks a thank lot. Thank you all. We finish. Uh, we, we finish. Thank you.